Hey guys, Smallmouth Crush, we're at the Bassmaster Classic. We're actually here a day early, checking out all the cool setups here. And uh, behind me, we got the, the famous fish tank, the hog trough. So this is actually at the Berkeley booth down here at the Classic, and there is some legit studs in this tank. We're gonna talk all about it. That's all coming up. All right, so we have Jim. Jim, you came down here, you got the tank early, like you were the first. Me and the Yamaha semi-trailer was the first one in the building. It's Sunday morning at nine o'clock. Sunday? Yeah, we had to be in here Sunday. Okay, so uh, a few days. Yeah, with the tank like this as being as big, everything builds around us. You know, this is 44 foot long, plus the truck and all that. You know, if everything was already pipe and drape and boost, we couldn't get in. That's great. You know, as soon as I'm here, I'm starting to worry about teardown. So right. one of the biggest questions, does this go down the road with water? No, it goes down the road, road empty and then the fish come from, like here, they came from the Cooper River, supplied by the uh, South Carolina fish and wild. I mean, obviously you do this all over the country right. in the dead of winter. Right. I mean, how, where do you get those fish? Well, I have these little jars, right. they little pills and I throw them in and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, like, you know, up north everything's frozen. Yeah. I've got. This year's particular fish, we pulled them on December 23rd, and I have holding tanks at my facility at home. So once that happens, my stress level goes through the roof because I got to worry about keeping them healthy. I know a lot of guys do not want to, you know, they're, they're mad at me because I don't let them catch them. Sure. But there's reasons for the reasons for, you know, I've got to keep those fish for anywhere from five to nine weeks. So we're running them show to show to show. Sure. And it's so stressful on those fish, it's stressful on us too. How are you transporting them in between the shows? So I've got a uh, about a 150 gallon tank that sits in front of the gooseneck of the in between the cab of my truck and the gooseneck of the tank. And it's three inches thick of insulation. Okay. So they don't freeze, it doesn't freeze. So like, let's say we're tearing this down Sunday yep. and it's 26 degrees out. I bring my truck in and take the actual water out of here because say 70 degrees. So I put it on, fill my tank, put those fish in. I don't have to acclimate them because that's the temperature they came out of. Now I set that truck outside for two to three days and that temperature slowly okay. comes down to where it gets to in the upper 40s for the next event. Right. So when we fill it, you know, when we fill it with tap water 95% of the time, and then I dechlorinate it and get it all neutral for the fish, those, that temperature is already to where it needs to be, you know, you just dump the fish in the wrong. There's so much that goes into this. That people oh yeah, not the, I, the I'm, there's there's a lot. I actually, we got I gotta dig in, I got a bunch more questions. We're gonna uh, get to the bottom of this because it's like a serious setup. And just the fact that tear down and transporting and doing all these shows, I know you got a couple of these rigs out there. I got four. So how long have you been doing this? Well, I've been competing it since six, 16, tournament fishing. Wow. Yeah. And one of my mentors, actually two of them, Fish Fishburn, Joe Thomas. Joe Thomas was one of the best uh, promoters there was. Sure. I met him um, after I qualified for the Northern Divisional and like didn't know I was that good. I was uh -huh. competing against guys that are my age now Sure. because we didn't have the high school fishing or the college. And I met with Joe and I was like, what do I need to become a pro fisherman? And he says, if you can't public speak or promote, you're not wor you're worthless to a sponsor. You can be the best fisherman in the world, but if you can't sell a product, sure. so you, it's like you need to pursue the business side. So then that's when I got involved with the fish tanks. I became an employee first, and I ran them for about ten years. Then I did my own thing, but still worked in in the shop stuff, building them and and doing the maintenance and stuff on them. Well, on 2008, I bought them. Okay. So I've owned them since 2008. And at that time, yeah, yeah. the reputation of the hog troughs were terrible. They'd been off the roads for two years, leaked like crazy. Okay. Um, I was inspecting one of them, walking, I fell through it. So I fell through the one that's in the scrapyard. So when I bought them, there was five. Two of them were only worth keeping. Uh -huh. And I took the, the whole, everything down to a bare frame. Are these still the originals? Uh, this is one that I bought five years ago from a, I bought a competitor out because of the Berkeley thing. I started doing some things for Berkeley and then they wanted their own exclusive. Okay. So then I knew where this one was. This one's only 12 years old. Sure. So I bought them out and took nine months to put this Berkeley deal together. This, is, this tank here is just now being revealed. 
if you remember the old one was black and stuff like this so this is matches the booth and all that so i've been kind of keeping it hid this past year until right. now it took us a month to do it this is all a wrap yeah and, you it's know gorgeous. we broke everything down yeah you know i'm the only one in the industry that has a reusable gasket and the cool thing about that is going down the road this is not glass glass because if it was it would shatter it's an inch thick they're five by eight sheets and they have to be able to flex if they don't move and flex you're going to have issues i've got three other ones so if you see the blue ones the hog trough they got some competitors names on it i built one of those 15 years ago from scratch so i'm, I'm an operation of four i'm the largest so, in the country so where's home base i'm out of worcester ohio so most people don't know where that is. You ever hear of that company called Rubbermaid? Yeah. That's where it started. Okay. Um, I'm basically 30 minutes from the Canton Football Hall of Fame. Yep. And you know, about 30 minutes from Akron, Ohio and stuff too. So I'm in the northern, northern part of Ohio. On a normal year before all this stuff happens, we usually do about 60 shows a year. So, you know, I got four units that's running all over and, and it's been, really rewarding but yet there's a lot of headaches and stuff sure. too yes. you know drivers and keeping fish alive and stuff like yeah. we have to haul them and you just can't pull into anywhere with one of these either so sure. you're basically a semi is what it, yeah. and you, like i said this it goes down the road empty there's no water so in how it. many gallons like roughly is this this right? one's like 4300 gallons 4300 gallons uh, i got like another one it's 47 and another one it's like 41 42 and then my little tank um, which we do lot smaller venues and stuff. That one's about 2,500 gallons. I'm kind of naive about this, but uh, like, do you put a garden hose in? Yeah, that's how we filled the, this okay. one here. We had a three quarter inch garden hose. They got extremely great pressure. We filled it in two and a half hours. Wow. Now I've got one place that I had to put the hose clear across sure. for almost 300 feet. It took 12 hours to fill it. You know, it just varies where we go. Yeah. Um, sometimes we can fill them with the fire truck, which I prefer not to, because they just want to sit there and put the water as fast as, and it just, as you can see, sure. there's a lot of rocks. So how do you, are you trying to, as far as the structure, right? You see, we have a bunch of rocks, we have some grass, we got gravel. Stump. Are you putting that in, obviously, before the water comes right. in? So what we do is we're, when we're driving, I love, make everything flat. So it doesn't scratch, the grass is, is, you know you don't want to scratch it so we do all that stuff get it flat and then I come in and stack it up to make it look like try to be realistic as possible but I also this is another secret that nobody knows I also put 80 pounds of regular salt in so if you go to like um, Lowe's or something you're, you don't want system saver because you'll kill them all you want solar salt and salt is what we use. All the fish hatcheries and hauling people use salt because what it does is it reduces their stress and it makes them produce slime coat. So normally I put anywhere from 80 to 100 pounds, 120 pounds of salt in here. As far as anglers throughout the years, you've had the best of the best on these tanks. Yes, and I've had the worst of the worst, worst but I ain't gonna say who those are, but you know, um, my most amazing one to date is still Kevin Van Dam. And the reason for that, he makes a he does a sidearm cast that it runs. This bait runs about this far below, and he does something at the end, and it rolls up and goes into the. Nobody else has been able to sure. do that, um, and I don't even try because if you do and you screw up, you look really bad. So right. I just do the little pitching things and and stuff like that. Sure. But, so you obviously you got a speaker system. We got the we got it set up here with the chairs. This is where everyone's going to gather around during the seminars, and of course we have the. Uh, the bass boat. I suppose you want to see up I on do. top. Let's well, go see, yeah, let's go, let's go see it up top. This is a top, this is a ranger boat up here. And then we've got a dummy motor. That's another question everybody asks. It used to be a real motor. We take the, we took the head out and just have a shell. This actually used to be a real ranger boat. Right. It was more than likely in an accident where the back of it got hit. Sure. So they cut the front ends off and send them to me. So, and then you can see how roughly, how wide the tank is. It's about yeah. three, three and a half feet. I mean, it's about five feet deep, three and a half feet wide. And this one's 28 feet long. But so at this stage today, tomorrow the classic starts. Are you pretty much set? Are you happy with uh, how it looks and everything's ready to go? Oh yeah, we're all cleaned up, ready to go. We, I mean, mm -hmm. since me getting in here on Sunday, we got a lot of things done quickly. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. the cleaning part, we was blessed that I didn't have to go through a snowstorm. This, sure. come, this come in nice and clean, so it's just a wipe down instead of a clean and then a wipe down. 
Now, is there a cover over this on the highway? No. So it, you probably get a lot of looks. Oh, I do. At and gas stations, oh, places like I like that. to mess with people and stuff, you know. Uh, people come up to me and they look at it and they ask me what it is. So I get the response, is that a reptile display? Right. And I'm like, yeah. And I'll walk back and I'll act like the snakes are all gone and I start freaking out, you know. <laughs> no, but, you know, but nah, most of the, the other thing I'd like to do, since it goes down the road empty, because, you know, we can't haul it this way. We, you can't even can't crank a jack down there because there's so much weight right is i want to take those great big giant pillows and put two sticks and have them on strings so they look like they're actually in the tank as i'm driving but i think i'd cause some issues with that right and maybe some accidents sure but, but uh yeah i get a lot of people come up they'll fly by it yep and then all of a sudden they'll slow way down so i pass them again so they can look at it and yeah. give me the thumbs up right and, right you know it's a lot of great exposure for everybody that's so cool Wow, so this is actually the view from up here. We're gonna have a big audience. I'm actually gonna uh, come by in the next couple of days and show you guys uh, what kind of crowd we get here and, and some of the seminars. I mean, we got a lot of great anglers, uh, all Berkeley pros, and they're gonna be talking all about the new baits coming up. Exactly. And, and uh, some exciting stuff here for sure. Heck, we even got your dad coming down for this. <laughs> oh, yes. What do you think of this operation? It's great, it's just great. It's a lot of work, but it was great. I mean, I helped. You know, I raised him, he started bass fishing ever since he was little, and that's all we've ever did ever since we've been bass fish. Did yeah. you ever think I'd do it for a living, Bob? It sort of started coming when right. he decided to join, join a bass club. And sure. Then, and, then, and then it took off from there. He joined a bass club and started catching fish and got out of that small bass club stuff and started going bigger, and this, this is his life. All right, here's the question. How many pounds of bass you got in here? <laughs> All of them. I mean, there's three of them pushing close to 10 pounds. I know one of them's over 10 because they told me it was. Majority of the time, this isn't the, that big of fish and stuff. Sure. It doesn't happen that way. The best tank I ever did was last year for an MLF deal. So they brought me the Some bass junk. for the tank. Oh, the three of them were over 10. Wow. They were only eight years old. They were their northern strain, and they feed them nothing but koi. Huh. And that was the biggest fish-wise, tank-wise, with the biggest fish I've ever had. This is pretty close. There's some yeah. pretty good ones here. Um, so I, I know we're gonna probably have, there's probably two questions that everyone's gonna be asking. They wanna know, I assume, how you feed these fish, and then obviously, I, I assume at the end, they're put right back yeah. in, in the water. <clears throat> so what happens is, like, we won't feed these fish. They're, they just got electroshocked. That's how the DNR gets a lot of their fish. So we won't feed these ones. They're still going to, they're probably not going to bite that great, which, you know, which is good. You can still get bites, but yet you're able to demonstrate your bait. Yes. You know, like in the wintertime when I use these other fish and I've used them and used them and used them, they'll eat anything. Mm. You can't get the bait to the bottom, so you can't even demonstrate. So I hate it when it's that way. Yeah. The reason why I don't want to feed them is because then they'll start doing their bodily functions. Sure. And then the ammonia spike. So the, if you put them in those smaller tanks, the ammonia spikes, it's like a, um, it's a silent killer. Like carbon monoxide to us, ammonia to fish is the same thing. It'll kill right. them. Right. So it's just yourself, or how many people do you have helping you with this setup? I've basically got, since we're running four tanks, I've got three guys. Um, Shane Shanauer. You know, he does the Harrisburg show. He's my main guy. He's the one that actually drove this in Sunday morning for me because I was in another show in Detroit. Um, and then we switched out. He's on his way to Indiana right now. He's probably set, today's third. Yeah, he's setting up. And then I've got a couple other guys. You know, they work full time. They take vacation just to come. Mm -hmm. So they double dip. They get paid on vacation, plus I pay them. Right. The hardest thing is being able to get drivers is getting someone that knows bass fishing you know because we got to do bass seminars and stuff i can get anybody to babysit but it, you know that's the hardest thing and it's usually you know like shane he works for the fish hatchery uh, up north with me well we're froze in sure. we're getting ready to open up here in a couple weeks because everything's thawing out but you know the drivers i got four guys shane shane hours by far my best um just make sure he doesn't see this because he'll probably want to raise afterwards <laughs> you know um but other than that you know I got four guys, and, and I'm always looking for new guys, too. So how can people get a hold of you as far as if they're interested in getting something like this set up at a show or an event or anything in the future? You know, I'm on Facebook. We're working on a new one for Berkeley, which we're really kind of having their deal that way. 
but Facebook is probably the easiest way. I'm working on new websites okay. and stuff like that. Other show promoters, sure. you know, I mean, I'm out there. I'm pretty easy to find. You know, you could get it. Go in Google mobile fish tanks. Sure. Five thousand mobile gallon fish tank. Well, we'll the put Hawk the link to the Facebook in the description below if anyone's interested. Uh, as far as that, follow your page and and check out. I mean, you guys got over sixty events. I mean, in a normal year, that's, that's you're, we're busy. You're all over. We're busy. The place. January so, January through March is our busiest time. Cause that's one of the sports shows. And now almost every weekend, I've got uh, four tanks running. This year's been a little different. Right. Usually January and the first part of February is jammed, and then come March it's a little spread out. Well, it's been opposite. Mm -hmm. I've lost probably about 12 shows for this year, yeah. but we're still in the 20s for the three months. Sure. So probably about 25 shows yeah. in three months. Normally we do about 28 to 35 in wow. three months. So what do you do in the off season? I'm a tournament fisherman, right? and we're still doing, you know, other shows and stuff, open houses, fairs and festivals, and okay. some. But you know, we do iCast. You know, sure. the tank that I take and die. I got one tank that has no branding on it. It's we put magnets on because of iCast. Because if we go in there and have Berkeley on it, Stray King's mad because Berkeley's right up front, and you know they're not paying. So it goes in. It's completely neutral and stuff. And in that tank, I can take to other events say hey you got a big type sponsor you want to do we can do that too so a tank like this like as far as you know, like fuel mileage pulling this thing what the heck i mean what do you get with that not enough no you know so <laughs> well, like if i'm going i got a tailwind yeah pushing me i'll right. get 11 10 or 11 Jeez. but if i've got a good strong front wind uh -huh. so what it does is it comes over the truck hits this big flat spot on the boat Yep. Comes over the top of that, and then goes down and hits the back wall. So I'm about five or six miles to Come the gallon. Oh, so these grass places right now are just great. Oh. You know, you know, my profits are going. Oh yeah, five or six miles to a gallon with a head. Right. And then the other thing, if I want to make a lane change, and if there's a car sitting here, you just kind of take the wheel and do a little swerve. Right. They get right by you real quick. <laughs> Very good. So. So I just want to thank Jim. That was some fascinating stuff. A lot goes in to being able to get this tank in here, all these fish. Uh, who knew? Fun facts. Very cool. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, until next time, we'll see you guys on the water.